Hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to you this morning. You're welcome to the third edition of um, I'm glad to inform you that we are back and better. As today's session promises to be exciting, awesome, and interactive. My name is Dapade Bayer. I'll be your host for today's session. As a team, we're actually pleased to be here with you today. We appreciate the time you have carved out to register for this event. And more importantly, you participated in this. We are glad to inform you that this event is going to take a panel discussion. We have some very informed and ready uh, panelists on ground today. Um, we will be looking at the topic managing virtual learning for school operations optimization, the new normal. I'm sure you are excited about the topic. All right. So, so before we get started very quickly, let's have the opening remark from our CEO. Mr. Badega is the CEO of Rasmus Publication. Over to you, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Hope we are keeping safe as usual. Um, straight to the business of the day. Our dear participants. Thank you for joining us today in the third edition of this uh, uh, program. And, uh, you know, as usual, in Russian publication, we felt we just have to do everything humanly possible, you know, uh, to assist, to support our customers. And uh, today's program as well promises to be nothing short of productive, you know, together as well. We sincerely appreciate your consistency in taking part in our previous sessions, and we are not easy with the current situation. In experience by school leaders, administrators, educators, the students, as well as the parents as well. Uh, it's no news that schools' operations have been motivated due to the current pandemic. You know, teachers are unable to do what they know how to do best. This is the opportunity to impart knowledge to the students. The, the schools are unable to generate revenue through fees, as usual, uh, in the ability to run, you know, some of the schools, they have loans that are running and they are unable to retain their staff, you know, they are able to pay salary, a lot of things. Uh, they are participants. Yes, we understand that the school operations is affected. Then, as publisher, you will not be spared too if you guys, you know, cannot discharge your duties. That is why this is very important. Our intention is to lend support to you in our team customer system around in a manner. Uh, that we share practical approaches to help your businesses, one, to ensure school businesses operations and reboot school activities, you know, adjustment to the new normal. It's obvious, there's no way we should be expecting the thing to go back to uh, our good ways of doing things. That is why we call this word new normal. You know, to this time around, we need to activate our mindset and we need to do something to, to do this then we need to prepare our customers especially the pupils the teachers you know so that we can the school business can you know uh stay alive ladies and gentlemen joining this program this morning is the right decision at the right moment because as a leader or as a school owner, 
you have that responsibility to make something out of nothing so that uh, you can earn the respect of your direct support, the parents, you know, people you are doing business with. This is very important. And for you to enjoy the maximum, it's just an advice, for you to enjoy the maximum benefit of this program, you need to do certain things. Decision must be taken after the program. You must try to develop your plans according to a very strict timetable to avoid any delay, procrastination, which are always enemies of sources. This is my advice. This is very important because I know it's going to be very interactive and uh, at the end of the day, we won't remain safe. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for that um, um, enlightening opening remark. Now, um, before we move on, we would like to um, use this opportunity to sincerely appreciate those that have been uh, joining our, um, our webinar, particularly the first and second edition. As we all know, this is the third edition. Since the inception of this um, series of webinars, um, we uh, hope you have been having, having a refreshing, a refreshing moment. moment. Again, Again, we have packaged a, a value-added value session. session. And with and the support, support of the fantastic, of the fantastic panelists, of panelists that we have on board, today, today we'll be doing we'll justice, justice to the topic, managing actual level for school operations and the new, the new normal. We have a few in items to cover about this event. Today's webinar will be available on the channel at Rasmus Education. Um, copy of today's presentation there would also be provided in your email address. Please ensure that you have um, the correct email address so that you can get a copy of it. Also, furthermore, um, we would love to hear from you during today's webinar session. If you have any questions, for the panel members, feel, please feel free to drop it. You can send it to us as a chat. 0701 444 3069. I take the number again 0701 444 3069. Or you can use the Q and A panel at the bottom of your screen. You could send us a message through the um, panel. You can also send us a tweet at RASMED Public Art 1. We will collect these questions and then um, make them available to our panelists at the end of the main session. Now, without wasting much time, we would, um, would be moving over to our panelists that we have on ground. We have um, four major people to work with, to work with today. today. Um, um, I'll be starting with an education, education. His, his name is Mr. James. Mr. James. Let's say it again. Good morning. Okay. okay. We have yeah, uh, Mr. 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 Okoje Davis George. He is an IT personnel and a developer. Good morning. Okay. Oh, You're welcome, oh, sir. Um, we also oh, have oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Medina Abegode Omolafela. Good morning. All right. All right. We also have, also have uh, Miss, Mrs. Kaiko Mokola. Good morning, everyone. All right. Y'all. Um, um, we will be rubbing my together, together on, uh, on the, the topic managing virtual learning for school operations optimization, the new normal. And we'll be and having we'll be various perspectives, perspectives um, from the, the teacher and educationist. On the, on the side of the IT, IT developer, developer and also from the side of the parent, from the viewpoint of a parent, and also from the viewpoint of an administrator. All right. Major highlights we'll be having today would be learning application solutions for school adoptions and use, getting parents buying interest, school owners adoptive strategies, Staff, staff approach for new normal lesson delivery. All right, 
So um, I'll be kickstarting with Mr. Lassen de David. He is a versatile educationist. He is a graduate of mathematical education from the University of Uyo Akwaibom. He's an expert in professional experience with span training, facilitating creativity and innovation in teaching and ICT. So I will be starting with him. Um, Mr. Lassa and then James, um, in practical view, what's your, what's your own opinion on virtual learning as it relates to teaching? Because since this pandemic started, um, it has really been challenging. And I know a lot of parents a lot of teachers, a lot of administrators have been having um, a new reason to rethink how we've been doing things because of this pandemic. So um, what's your viewpoint concerning virtual learning? What, it is, what, what, what exactly is virtual learning? How do you see it? And how do you think as a teacher, an educationist, what's your viewpoint to it? Over to oh, you. Uh, 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 thank you, sir. Virtual learning is, uh, before we can really talk about the application of the virtual learning, we should uh, firstly determine or divine the, the term virtual learning. And we all know that virtual learning is a learning experience that is enhanced through the utilization of computers and the internet, both outside and inside the facilities of educational organization. Now, the instruction most commonly takes place in, the, in an online environment, and the teaching activities are carried out online, whereby the teachers and the learner are physically separated in terms of place, time, or both. Now, virtual distant learning is the online form of distant education, wherein the teacher and the students we have to interact via internet. <laughs> and all course materials, assignments, and other exchanges are technologically aided by new age communication means and computer. Now, the online mode of distant learning allows teach teachers and students to interact with each other in real time or like um, as if they are having the personal contact, physical contact with each other. Now, virtual distant learning is basically a computer-based training method. And then um, it has been made highly interactive in the last few months since uh, the compulsory lockdown has been enforced with the use of uh, CDs, the, the computer discs, the LCDs, audio video conferencing, online chatting, even webcam interaction. So even though the teachers and the class of students might be separated physically, you know, the interaction between the, these two um, is, uh, no less in, is, is of no less intense. For effective communication and the relay of information, teaching institutes should uh, have an able technological network and which can support the process of teaching aptly. Now, also required uh, uh, the competence designed instructional system which the students can understand without any problem. So far since the lockdown, the virtual learning activities has been so wonderful and uh, it's been helping so far since the, the search of uh, this pandemic thing has really occupied many places. Now, the COVID-19 has resulted in school shutdown all across the world Globally, over 1.2 billion children are out of classroom now. And uh, as a result, educationists, as an educationist, we should note that these students cannot just be um, locked out like that when we're talking about um, the, the teaching learning experiences. So, and that's the reason why online virtual learning has come to, to, to stay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, um, uh, your view on virtual learning. But then I would, um, before I um, come back to you, let me, let me go over to Mrs. Uh, Bukola Amaotaiwo. She is um, a school owner and she has been um, working with parents and teachers um, on this virtual learning program. 
Um, I have the understanding that you have been able to um, use virtual learning for learning with um, with young children and with adults. So um, with this new, with the pandemic situation in town, um, has there been any noticeable change in terms of business, in terms of how it has affected things then? What strategies have you been putting in place um, when it comes to virtual learning? Or do you think um, you would still prefer to go back to the old normal or what we had, which is the day-to-day, um, face-to-face interfacing of um, school, um, school learning? What you Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much, sir. Um, when it comes to virtual learning, it's a bit um, unfortunate that we, most of us in Nigeria outside here, were not prepared for it. But the truth is, there was nothing we could do than to embrace the new normal. Now, um, the schools went into closure in the, on the 20th of March. And what that means is that um, students need to learn from home. If we're going to minimize the impact of the, of the loss of learning on them when they come back, we have to continue to ensure that we engage them from, from home. Now, what this, this brings in opportunities, it brings in uh, threats too. Some of the opportunities it brings is that somehow in one way or the other, if you're able to utilize technology, if you're able to connect your students through technology, some of the costs are being reduced. Some of the cost of running the school, some of the cost of running a face-to-face -face, um, interaction are being reduced. However, there is a concern that, is, um, that might be on the minds of people as regards virtual learning. Now, we, we, came, out, we came into it suddenly. Mm -hmm. What that exactly. means is that we must learn to engage in a different way. We must learn to ensure that the students have a, a very good learning experience despite the fact that we cannot see them. We must learn to take use of the, make use of the data we have to determine the best way to reach our customers. We must learn to collaborate. We must learn to communicate. One good thing about the era is that um, so many uh, online sites opened up their systems for people to access it freely. Hmm. There is implication for that too. We, there is more access to resources. However, we still have people who can't access these resources um, based on the challenges of power and, um, and connectivity. It is in the line of this that every, every school business owner should be able to determine the demography of the people you serve. You don't, uh, it's not going to be a copy and paste thing. It has to be collaborative. You need to speak to your clients. You need to speak to your customers. You need to know what is convenient for them. You need to know what is cost effective. It is when you do this that you'll be able to sustain it. It's not about using big technology. It's not about using um, uh, highly I mean, highly sophisticated gadgets. The main objective in the best interest of the child as stated by United Nations Child Rights Act is that anything we do must be in the interest of the child. Whether we use technology, whether we use WhatsApp, whether we use Zoom, whether we use synchronous learning or um, the other one which is not synchronous, we must ensure that we engage students, we engage them in meaningful and deep learning. I'd like us to remember an, an aspect that is not usually we, don't usually, we don't usually pay attention to. Children are experiencing trauma at this time. Mm. Emotionally, they are experiencing, they're, they're feeling, oh, why are we not going to school? For the first time in a long time, students will ask questions and parents don't have answer. Yesterday, someone still asked me, when are we resuming? <laughs> oh, I just told the person, <laughs> nobody knows. Nobody knows when we're coming back to school. The, so the social life, the children have missed lots from their social life. They've missed their friends. We also have to pay attention to that. We have to have, have to pay attention to our relationships, the relationships we have with our clients. If we're going to optimize, uh, reduce costs to opti optimize our businesses for better efficiency during the COVID era, and even in the post-COVID era, we must ensure that we, we, uh, we, we, we pay attention to the relationships we have with our clients. Truth is, some children will be, will be thrown out of school. No matter how much the school fees is, some children will never return. It's a mm -hmm. fact. And truth is, some teachers will never return. The okay. truth is, some parents will never return. But those that are with us, how are we managing relationships? How are we ensuring that we provide tailor-made services to them? 
how are we um how are we um ensuring that our children don't experience the kind of um um pressure they have when they are when they are with us in school this is because we can't see them we can't touch them we must learn new engagement strategies with our clients with our internal customers and our external customers thank you okay. very much thank you very much man. you really looked at a lot of things and then we'll, we would really be coming back to that because i really want us to look as an administrator i would like us to look at you know the staff um staff retention the how you are able to now interact with the kids at the school owner and then the parents but before we come to that let me um quickly hear from mr okoje davis um he's a he's an it developer he has been exposed to a lot of um, uh a lot of information technology tools during this um post-pandemic um, era so we'll be hearing from you um since this pandemic started, has there been tools you have been um, able to discover and use as an IT person and has been used by institutions and uh, educational um, organizations? Have there been any of those tools? And what is the reality of all those tools? Because uh, we've been hearing a lot like WhatsApp, um, Telegram, um, Google Classrooms, and a lot of things like that. So what's your view as a, from an IT perspective? How easy is it, you know, implementing or making those things available for the, for the school and then the students? Oh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I will start with uh, the list of the um, available tools and I will highlight the ones I've explored and I will touch um, how the the adoption rate and the affordability okay well. so nice. let, let me start with the um the categories i briefly i categorize them into uh four categories um, okay. which i will highlight briefly i have the live stream uh the ones under the live stream category and i have the ones that fall under the um, broadcasting i have the one that uh falls under the, the chat based um virtual learning uh tools as well as the full uh, learning management systems or platforms. So starting with the live stream uh, platforms, I start with um, Zoom. Zoom is a platform that uh, as uh, it's, 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 it, there, is a, there is a kind of uh, technology that powers uh, these uh, live stream uh, tools, which is to broadcast live from uh, an end-to-end -end, um, broadcast. So there must be someone at the other end while at the broadcasting end, while there's another person at the receiving end. So both are communicating and interacting virtually live. So in this case, um, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages of uh, these live stream platforms. Though we have some other live stream platforms, which includes Google Meeting. At the same time, we have uh, Skype and some which are, are not that popular. But the, the reason why I picked these few ones uh, is because it has been tested, I've tested them, uh, and I know how they actually work. Um, majorly, these platforms are being used uh, for day-to-day -day business operations, but they, have, they, they can also be used in other uh, aspects of uh, our lives when it comes to uh, IT-based uh, solutions. So, and schools are adopting it for, for learning also. So, um, Google Meeting is also a product from Google, which um, it, was, uh, the, it was a product that, that they renamed to Google Meeting. They have Google, uh, Google Chat. I think it was Google Chat. Hangout. They have uh, Google Hangouts. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So they changed, changed it to Google Meeting because they added some, uh, some uh, other functionalities. And Skype is a, is a tool, uh, is a communication and collaboration tool that has been uh, for years before Microsoft, uh, 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 um, how can I put it, acquired it. So Skype also is used for business operations as well, but it's been adopted for uh, schools, for mm -hmm. virtual, uh, for, for live uh, stream learning. Though, uh, before I go to the advantages and the disadvantages, let me just go through uh, the other uh, group of virtual learning platforms. We have the broadcasting uh, option, which uh, if going by uh, the, the way at which Lagos State uh, government 
is trying to bring the education to to oh, to the homes in Lagos State. They 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 collaborated with some radio stations to broadcast uh, some lessons from I, I believe that must be from the Ministry of uh, of Education. So they came up with uh, there are some radio stations and they have some time they, they have some times related to be broadcasting all those uh, lessons. At the same time, uh, we have cable TVs. For example, there are some channels on uh, cable TVs. Let me uh, pick DSTV uh, as an example. There are some channels which were uh, on premium uh, bouquets, premium subscriptions in, uh, before the pandemic. But because of the pandemic, they had to bring release it to, to, to the lower bouquet for people to be able to have access to it. So uh, going by the chart-based, uh, Chat is like a test based and where they can as well share documents and uh, videos or media materials. We have the WhatsApp, we have the Telegram, we have the Skype also. At the same okay. time, we have the Microsoft team. Okay. So WhatsApp, WhatsApp is popular, at least in Nigeria as of today, uh, at least with 80% of uh, mobile phone users, especially smartphone users, they are aware that of what uh, WhatsApp is. Telegram is it has been for long, but it's just like they have some kinds of some other features, which is like an enhanced version of, of WhatsApp. For example, WhatsApp has a group limit of around 250 people, while mm -hmm. Telegram has over 200, over 200,000 people in a group. So uh, Skype also is also, since they, they have an option of uh, video streaming, which is live streaming, video calling, at the same time, they have chat based one-on-one -on -one chat base as, as well as group uh, chat base. Microsoft team also is a, is a, is a software created for team collaboration uh, in the IT industry, basically, and uh, business operations. But at this time, we have to explore different kind of tools that has to do with collaboration. Virtual learning is, is a matter of being able to collaborate with the students wherever they are, while the um, instructor or the teacher is on the other end. So going by the, uh, the, the last, um, group uh, in, in, the, in the last uh, items or last uh, platform in the in these groups are the ones under the uh, LMS learning mm -hmm. management systems uh, or platforms we have the google classroom mm -hmm. we have Mo we have moodle we have a, uh, then an indigenous one which is we have a lot uh, indigenous a lot of indigenous uh, LMS platforms but okay. uh, i i picked just one of them which is uh, teachme.ng Okay. Google Classroom is also a product from of, of Google Google uh, LLC Inc. Uh, hey, Mr. They, Mr. Koje, sorry, sorry. Let me just quickly um, um, enter, get into your conversation a little bit, so that you can just answer the question. But from your own view, we've heard a lot about Google Classroom. Do you think it's much better than the Skype approach, um, the WhatsApp, um, Telegram approach? We'll still look in details at some of these approach. But from your own view, as a developer. Um, do you think um, it's a better option? Well, Google, Google, Google Classroom is a better option, but uh, requires a, uh, a, a, a lot of commitment when it comes to adoption, when it comes to implementation, when it comes to uh, um, usage. For okay. example, most of Google, Google uh, products when it comes to school is not accessible to the public. Mm -hmm. You must sign up as an organization before you'll be able to even um, have access to what they offer. Okay. Uh, moreover, while exploring Google Classroom, I wasn't able to sign up as an individual because it's, it's a, I have to sign up as a, as a school owner mm -hmm. or a, an instructor, which I couldn't do. But mm -hmm. based on the information I gathered on the platform, I was able to see, I noticed that there are some, they have, uh, the platform is built while they, they enabled some other um, some other add-on uh, applications, maybe uh, um, out of box, there are some limitations that uh, some other schools wanted to use, but it's not at all, it's, it's not inbuilt. Okay. Then the, the, the organization can as well buy, so pay for so those add-ons, add it to, to the package and- uh, And use, okay. And use it. All but, right. Okay, but, uh, we will we'll still okay. come back to some details because we'll be looking at, the challenges being experienced using some of these software. But before we do that, let me go over to our parents' representative, because we've heard from the administrator, you know, she spoke about 
um, children asking when school will resume. You know, I, I can feel what a parent would have to go through. When, when virtually every day you are answering your child's questions, like, oh, mommy, when are we resuming? Daddy, when are we going to school? Are we not going to go again? I, I feel that right now, even children will be bored of staying at home. If they were hoping to be at home right now, after staying at, at home for this long, they would have been tired of staying at home, except there's something keeping them busy. So um, from the parent's point of view, we have Mrs. Uh, Medina Abegude. She has, she has about, uh, she has two kids. And um, she has actually been having to deal with them when it comes to learning online, um, keeping them at home, managing this period. So we would like you to share your experience. How has this, what, how are you finding this period as a parent? How is it for even the children? Because it's really a, a, a psychological thing to deal with because they're not having to go to school. Then all of a sudden, the parent now comes and says, oh, uh, your teacher has now sent in your assignment. Instead of now dealing with the teacher, you are now dealing with your mom, your mom that you used to laugh and play with. Now your mom has to now start plugging you to do assignments and all those things. So how does it how does it work? How, how are you finding this period, and how have you been? Um, which virtual learning platform has been used um, for some for your kids, and how have you been finding it? Let's hear from you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Well, like uh, Mrs. Amo said, definitely children will be bored. They are willing to go back to school. The online teaching is just like a lifesaver and it came in at the right time. Though most schools didn't key into it when the lockdown started. I think they keyed into it about, let me say, like three or a month after the lockdown. But nobody envisaged that um, it was going to take this long for schools to reopen. Well, when the idea came in from the school that they were going to start um, online teaching classes, of course, being a typical Nigerian and African, I was skeptical. Because you know, online teaching is not in us. We are not used to it. Most of us, uh, we have our iPads, our gadgets, but basically for chatting, for texting, for every other thing, not for teaching. So when the idea came in, I personally as a person didn't really believe it was going to be successful. But be that as it may, the school, uh, we have a WhatsApp platform for parents where the school had a, like an online meeting with all parents and our ideas were sought. So eventually the school settled for two platforms, the WhatsApp and Telegram. You have um, the liberty to join whichever one you want to join, just for you to submit your numbers for you to be added. Initially when we are told it to start, then I was also off duty, I was at home. So I felt well, there won't be any issues for me to supervise them since I'll be with them. But the week they were to start the classes, I was also asked to come back to the office. So my challenge was now, how do I make this student participate and of course participate qualitatively? Because children, their lifespan is low. And being what they are, you know, and a lot of distractions coming in on the gadgets, they tend to shy away from the primary aim of them being on the online classrooms. So when we are asked that, I now had to take up the services of a private home tutor because I feel that is the best I could do in that situation because I feel they needed the normal supervision and monitor, which I may not be able to do because of my own professional engagement too. So that was what I did. And then we're also giving the timetable. You know, it's not as if it's an everyday thing. Because, you know, children, like um, the teacher said, uh, most of them, it is important for them to also have a social life outside their parents alone. So I know because they don't go to school, we have a timetable that was sent to us. They do the classes on alternate days. It's not an everyday thing. And the timing. I think they have a reduced time because normally I think when they are in school they use like 40 minutes there about. But most of these online teachings does not take more than 20, 25 minutes maximum because it's also an interactive class. It's not about just coming in, giving them the videos and telling them to copy. The teachers engage the students just for the teachers to know they are online. But most times the teachers they will take the attendance mm -hmm. because they ask them to submit their needs so that you know that you have a sizable number of your students participating. I'm 
privy to all this because my the other number I also use is also on the WhatsApp platform. So basically, when they are online, I'm also online with them just for me to monitor the activities. And so far, so good. Well, it's been worthwhile. What I do actually with regards to the assignments, I don't need to flog them. My children are between the ages of 11 and 9. So to an extent, they are able to do their assignments independently. Mm -hmm. At times when I feel the classes are a bit technical, I just tell them to send to my to me on my WhatsApp page. So I just go through and they submit. Mm -hmm. So basically, most times they submit their assignment even before I get home. Because what they do is they submit to the teacher's personal page, all the students. And to a large extent, it has been worthwhile because um, the students are kept busy. The assimilation rate left to me is also improved because it's about 40 minutes, 45 minutes in the class. Mm -hmm. Then also, yes, the, the, and I think the teachers are also even covering what they're supposed to cover because we even sent a scheme of work before the online classes started so that we could monitor what they're actually doing. And it's been worse, of course, the students are not losing, though on the parents, it might be a bit expensive. Mm, I because, was just about uh, getting to that. Yes, because... you definitely must recharge. Mm. It is a must. And you know children too. When you are not there, there's tendency for them to get distracted exactly. with games. And know the game, so of course, it gets, they get to use a sizable amount of data for that too. So, but with monitoring supervision, and then I had to actually did some parental controls on some apps so that they won't have access to those apps. Of course, so that while they are learning, they are learning with full concentration. So, left to me, I think it's been worthwhile. Okay. Though you need to mix with people. But with presentation, of course, we need to make the best use of what we have now. So it's been okay. Assignments wise, they've, and the teachers who have been sending the results of the assessments. I even have a teacher for my other son. What she does, she already has a, like a spreadsheet. So once she has, but every week she sends their scores to them. If you have any complaint, maybe you submitted, your assignment was not marked or recorded, you still have to go back to her. So it's been worthwhile and it's been, I think, it's been beneficial to the parents and also the students. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Um, before we, I would still go back now to the school administrator and then the our teacher, because the from the parent side, she has said a lot of things. Um, it's already now in use. Um, they are having to pay, you know, but then we're looking at a few of these things um, in a few minutes. For, um, for our participants, we have a lot of attendees online. We appreciate you coming online. And um, if you have any question that you'd like any of the, uh, the panelists to answer, please use the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen, or you can send to our WhatsApp number, 0701-444-3069. Um, I take it again, 0701-444-3069. Six nine, please send in your questions. So um, to Mrs. Taiwo now, um, our parents has given us a very um, open point of view. It seems like the parents are so happy with uh, what the school administrators are doing. But from an administrator's point of view, um, how has it been considering this post pandemic? Um, well, let me say pandemic slash post pandemic period. How have you been able to manage your teachers in terms of payment? in terms of now creating content too for the student, in terms of now um, following up, because it now takes a little more, because it's not a conventional coming to, um, coming to school to um, face the students directly. Now, the, the teachers have to do a lot more in terms of creating content, following up with the parents, sometimes even marking the scripts every day. You understand? Now, you can if there is a lazy teacher, you can almost fish the person out easily. So how do you, how has it been as an administrator managing it? Then also managing parents too, because now you now have to convince parents to uh, pay. That's why the fact that we are not, the, the children are not physically in school. I have a friend that was talking about the school sending an email 
and he was like, uh, he, when he saw the email from the school, he was really scared because um, one, the parents now have to, not everyone has the financial buoyancy. How are you able to manage all these things together and still be able to um, get across to the students? Over to you, Mrs. Tyler. Thank you so, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Yeah. I start with the teachers because they are the backbone of every school, no matter okay. the the investment in technology, no matter the investment in structure, in physical structure, the teachers that will still ensure that the customers stay. So we give it to them. Um, we were able to pull through, I use my personal experience now, we were able to, able to pull through March and April. Uh, let, me, let me state at this point that um, the COVID pandemic came in as a shock, I say that again, and what, what it meant automatically is that if you are, teach, you are teaching, and you cannot function in the virtual space. There was virtually very little the school could negotiate with you because the value that is required at that time is no longer available. So I will, I will not deny the fact that some very few were had to be thrown into the other ocean of people who want to operate on face-to-face -face learning. Mm -hmm. For the ones that were were left, the majority, over 90% that were left that could assure us that you will be online, we will ensure your phone is charged, and you will engage, uh, you engage the student in learning, and your learning will be interactive. This required skills, which we exactly. try to um, um, introduce training at the beginning. So um, we try to introduce training at the beginning. We, we were trained on it. Okay. I myself, got trained fully on Zoom on the first week. Mm -hmm. I, I did not, I could not, I was not able to do that much, I, much as I can do now when it started, but it was obvious that there was nothing I could do or my, my boss could do. We had to just learn. My boss is going to 60 years. She now works with, she now uses Zoom. She now, any, any app, she's right. able to use it. So if a 60 year old woman is, changing, is uh, improving. I don't know what will happen to us if we are saying that we're waiting for school to resume. There is necessity for virtual space. Um, you must be able to operate in the virtual space or you lose your job. And that it's a reality. It happened in our school and so on. When it came to May, income was not coming in. There was no revenue. We had to sit down because communication is key as a leader. We have to sit down and say, come, this is what is going to happen. Are we going to fold up classes? Are there going to be job cuts or pay cuts? We all agreed on pay cuts. Some 75, some uh, 60, based on the, your skills and um, the, the, the things you handle, yes, and what you do. So no one will tell you that there's no pay cuts, except their person is receiving grants from the federal government. <laughs> there were pay cuts, even with us. So on the part of the parents, now, um, there is no point designing a product for someone who does not know how to use it. Yes, our school is in a mid, in middle income area. Most of our, uh, and before this time, we had um, introduced a model we called bring your device model. We had encouraged parents to ensure that um, children will have devices, but we will help them to put in our parental um, restrictions okay. like my other female on the, on, yes, parental controls as she mentioned. So it was a little bit um, easier for, for us to move to the online uh, platform. However, there were still some, which were about 40%, who we still needed to walk through. Take, through. take note of what I said. We needed to walk them through. And what we did is that we worked on the 60% who were coming online to help us to talk to the 40% that, oh, what's going on with you? Is your child... Uh, coming online, is it learning? Oh, if it's a no, oh, it's not as difficult as that. It is something you can do. I had to do some face-to-face -face meetings of, with social distances, of, of course, with some parents who, we were who, who were not able to come in. These are parents who were able to pay every bill you had, every bill you gave to them, but they, were, they don't just think they could. It's, something, it's a mountain to them, but we help them to bring it down, to, to bring down the mountain. Oh, this thing is very easy. And while taking our decision as a school, we use the demography of our, of our parents to choose the platform. We use okay. Zoom, but not all the time, because once you use Zoom, 
the participation drops. Mm, the participation exactly. drops. Yes. So WhatsApp is a very good one, but very important for teachers to engage students, to engage students. Now, if you are, not all teachers can prepare content because not all of us are learning instruction, um, learning uh, instruction experts, learning mm. content experts. But the truth is the resources are there. You only need to filter through the one that is relevant. There are resources on YouTube. There are websites that produce, that provide avenue where a child and, and, and teachers can play games. There are resources in which you can, you can use to, to, to show students the real life, real life things you really want them to see, which will cover up for the lab area, the, okay. the deficiencies that we have now in the use of laboratory and practical real life experiences. So as teachers, we have to make use of those resources. For payments, like I said earlier, the there were pay cuts. There were pay cuts, but uh, it, was, it was communicated. We all sat down on the table. Do we all want to sit at home to watch these kids also sit at home? Or we all want to do the little we can do and get the little funds we can get. Very few schools were able to get the full tuition. Very, very few schools. I don't have the data, but if you, if you have a school and you're able to get the few full tuition for online, online school, it's, it's, you must be a very lucky one. Truth mm. is, most of the parents who were sent out of their jobs. Mm, true, true. And we must not, we must, we must take a, a human perspective first. We were first humans before, before the COVID-19 came. Truth is, we're, we're running a business and we need to sustain it. But there are, there are cases in which we said, oh, you can't pay this now. What can you pay now? The okay. most important thing is that we need to keep running this That's learning true. platform. We need to keep getting data as a school. We need to keep the children engaged. You also need to rest. You are our customer. You also need to rest. We need to see our children. They need to make you also rest for some time. Truth is, if, if the children do not are not engaged, they will engage you. And that mm. is what we try to do. Thank you so very much. Okay. Thank you very much. That was that really answered uh, some major questions at such in fun. But then I want to hear from the teacher um, because, like you said, now the period now requires a new level of skill because it's no longer a face-to-face -face classroom. You know, as a teacher, it now involves uh, uh, creating um, exciting content because now when you send a video to somebody, maybe on WhatsApp, if the child is not interested, you know, the attention span of children can really be very low for some or for most. So it means if the content is not engaging, it, 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 it won't take long before they throw uh, the teaching to one side. So um, as, a, as a teacher, Mr. Lassende, how have you been able, how have you been finding it, creating this content and then monitoring your students? Because now, um, if it were a school that was um, used to the carrot and stick method of handling students, it would be much more difficult right now because there is now no stick to use on any child. So how do you follow up to ensure that they are actually learning? Because I think that's the most important thing the learning um, part of it. How are you able to ensure the, the learning part and then ensure the assessment? So three major things now, the creation of content in terms of creativity, the learning in terms of following up with the students to ensure that they are actually doing the assignments, they are doing the classwork, they are learning on a daily basis, and then um, the assessment. Over to you, Mr. Lassaile. Hey, since the, the lockdown, has been uh, activated and compulsory online teaching has been enforced by many schools from primary to most tertiary institutions, especially the private institutions. Now, going by my statistics based on my experience with my immediate environment of teaching, now we have 88.23% of my students are on attendance and over 80 percent of these students are active with the ongoing online virtual teaching and in respect to the responsiveness you 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 discover that attempting questions attempting um assignments and asking questions via all the channels that were laid down by the school to ensure the perfect teaching and learning experience now with my own um assessment on assimilation. However, the percentage of assimilation may not be factually determined, but we advise most of uh, our parents to use immediate uh, 
um, family members around them to be able to 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 give the best to our students. However, now when we are talking about the this pandemic thing, what how, how has it been with uh, teachers? How, how do you know the, the, the teachers have to understand something and then uh, to stay engaged with the place that you are working with? With this current teaching activity, that means online, the teacher has to understand that online classroom is activated instead of physical classroom. So this calls for creativity on the teacher's part. And uh, a teacher may not be that ICT inclined or an internet freak, according to what the school administrator just uh, stated, but with the new development, teachers are expected to diversify the teaching methodologies mm -hmm. to, to keep the interest and the attention of the students stable. However, as we all know, we are at different locations. The distractions tendency during the course of teaching are very high. And uh, the teaching activities need to be, to be so interesting to the extent that it will capture the students' attention and stabilize their concentration, even in the absence of the teachers involved. And um, what do we do on that? It has, you have to be creative. You, uh, we, we all know that most of our children, they are vast in the, their knowledge about these uh, gadgets. You know, even before the COVID outbreak, many of them will, will have to, at age of 10, they will undo phone and try to teach the parents about many things. So, uh, and how to, how to now convert from your teaching experience, you convert your teaching experience with their own knowledge and you, you bring up something that whenever they, they get to, to, to in contact with it, it will catch their attention and to make things work for them. Let me give you an instance. One, uh, one of uh, the topics that we, we taught recently, it's a, pretty, a, a practical topic that needed to, um, that required a physical uh, interaction. And I looked at it, okay, how do, I, how do I catch the attention of these students? How do I diversify? And I had to go online, downloaded some um, interesting um, videos pertaining to that teaching. I came online, we, we, we co-teach the students. And then when we are about to get to the end of it, the, the teaching involved even um, music. Whereby they just look at, okay, the beat is good, okay, okay. And before you know what's going on, they, they will follow the class. And then we made that most of our classes to be so short. So it, it's, it's not going to be like this, the normal 40 minutes per period. It has to just be like 20, 15 minutes. So it will be able to make the students to keep going and find it more interesting than to make it so bored. Now, what about cost implication on the teacher's part? I would like to ascertain that the fact that this is the time that will differentiate teachers who are seen teaching as a means of livelihood and those who are passionate or are called to be in this profession. Honestly, it has been so challenging. But you know, this pandemic surge is what makes us to know the real and the fake personalities as pertaining to teaching profession. Be it real or fake. Now, this is what is, is required. I would like the teachers involved to put this point into consideration, even if there is nothing uh, being subsidized from the school administrators to help out. Because you know, administrator too was saying that you know they have to, they have to, they have to be involved. They have to be relevant. But do you know that most of these schools, apart from even the cut down of salary, they did not subsidize data money for many of these teachers. Mm -hmm. So the the only thing that you you have to assume as a teacher as something that you are you are passionate about doing is always assume that this is an opportunity to explore your potentials. So creativity is required from any teacher who is ready to be relevant in this correct pandemic compulsory lockdown era. Okay. Passionate okay. and Passion. comply to the school administrators, exactly. lay down guide to keep the work going. Being okay. passionate covers many things actually, as I've said, and then see yourself as the solution to the contending issue. 
Because yeah, but what, 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 how do you see yourself as the solution? What keeps on going and what keeps you going is when you begin to ask yourself some questions. What if, I, if I'm the owner of the school? Will I just, uh, will I just uh, have nonchalant attitude towards teaching? Mm -hmm. What about if I am assigned to be the head of this establishment? Will I expect myself to be working this way that I'm working? Mm -hmm. And what can I still put in place to look away from the benefit but something that can add to the employer's status. So now, when you are talking about uh, how do we how do we assess uh, the content of teachers' materials instead of lesson notes, <laughs> that that is a little bit challenging. And uh, my administrator had a little bit taking care of that a little. But let me add this: in many schools, the administrator of the schools are on the same page of learning or medium to to monitor the activities in some schools and uh, in some schools where the videos are used like my own school and um, you know you have to send your video to an administrator the administrator will look at your video look at the content before he, the, the, the content is being given to to the student now when you're talking about psychological effect of job security and cut down of a salary effect. <laughs> to be honest, the school income has been cut down drastically, and many schools have drastically cut down their teacher salary. And in many schools, the maintenance of job is strictly based on the productivity of schools. Without, uh, 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 if, if if your productivity is not really appealing to the school administrator, then you are fired. So. With all these things, most of the teachers have to set to their minds that money is not what matters here. It is what you're going to have as a value to these students that matters here. Even when they cut down, well, well, they did not cut down, they subsidized, they did not subsidize, your passion for this job should keep you going. Okay. And that is what the, the, your, your level of resilience will determine maybe you are passionate about this job or you are just here. To, to have a, 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 a kind of a channel of life. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I think you've really looked at it. This is a this pandemic period would really bring out the real teachers because this is where we know those that are really passionate about teaching or those that are just there to collect salary. But then I understand that it's going to be, it's a challenging period for everybody, both the parents, the teachers, the students themselves because. I, I really, I see a lot of kids sometimes when I have to around and I'm wondering like, ah, what's the fit, you know, for this period? Imagine SS3 students that they, they have to write to IF and are waiting up for when the school would resume and they will be able to write this exam. It's really a challenging period for everybody. Um, in a few minutes, in, in the next one minute, we'll take a one minute break. Um, we'll be answering a lot of questions. We already have a lot from um, all our participants, from all our attendees, and we'll be delving into that in the next few minutes. We'll just take a, uh, a few, just one or two minutes break, and then we'll come back. Please stay tuned so that you can get the answers to your questions. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everyone, for staying tuned. Um, we are now ready to answer a, the lot, uh, a whole lot of questions that we have on ground. Um, I'll be directing the questions to 
um, our discussants to answer because all these questions relate to virtual learning. People are really very excited about this topic and they are ready, they are ready to um, know a lot more. Um, I would like our panelists to just answer as briefly as possible and as straight to the point as possible. I would really appreciate that. So um, I go ahead with some of the questions I have. Um, please feel free to send in your questions. You can use our key, the Q&A panel at the bottom of your Zoom um, app, or you can send the message to WhatsApp 0701-444-3069. I take it again, 0701-444-3069. Send in your questions and we'll, uh, we'll have our panelists answering them. So um, I'll be taking the first question. This is from Mr. Aino, one of our um, attendees. He said, how, how interactive will virtually will virtual learning be, especially at the basic level? Um, I would like um, Mrs. Taiwo and uh, Mr. Lassane to just give very brief answer to this. Because it seems like uh, if you are dealing with Zoom and all these other platforms, it, it's very easy to use it for adults. But then what, how, do you, how do you manage younger children? Children that are less than maybe from the ages of three, four, five. Is there a formula you, you've been using for that? Please share with us. I'll start with Mrs. Uh, Taiwo. Just very brief. Thank you, sir. All right. um, I like to say that um, online learning can be very, very, very interactive. You just For need to be creative. Children. You need, yes, you can. You, you must be creative. You must read. If you see the Zoom app, it has a whiteboard. It has a place you can share your 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 videos. It has a place you can share sounds. And I also think there's a place you can share your files. So what that means is that when you are teaching, your students can write on the board. What that means is that as you are teaching, you can share your video. Because they can see you, it means you can have a workout. I do free, um, I do some free math Zoom, math on Zoom classes. Sometimes our for learning period children? is just yes for oh. year one to years year six. Yes, okay. on Mondays, every Monday since the pandemic started. What that means, what what we do? Because truly, the the, the attention span is very is very low, but. If I come in now and I say the, the first thing we're going to do is going to, we're going to have a workout. And the next thing, my topic is um, colors. And I tell you, oh, we have a scavenger hunt. Going to the house, I need red, red items. That's for the lower classes. Okay. I need you to give me red items. Just yesterday, my students were prepared a bar chart. It was a 3D they were supposed to do, but they could not get it. And that's okay. a learning point for me too. But they brought in something back to the class. What that means is that beyond being on the Zoom class, they are being engaged. Truth is, you will need a lot of support from their parents. But once you have supportive parents, it can be interesting on Zoom. On Zoom, you can, you can play games together with your students on Zoom. On Zoom, you can, you can dance with your children like, like um, my partner said at the other time. So you have to be creative. You have to, you have to put away. It's a time we, we do a lot of unlearning and relearning. You have to put away that mindset that this is not possible. On the question of are we ready, we are not ready, but we cannot wait till we are ready. If we wait till we are ready, it's going to be, I'm sorry to say, I'm not being pessimistic, it's going to be worse for our children than us. So okay. we should not wait till we are ready. Whatever resources we have now, we should think through and create solutions. You can ask the children, sometimes they bring in ideas that even you can't think of. So mm -hmm. let's work on it. We will All right, thank you very forward. much. Thank you very make much. it engaging. Uh, Mr. Lassay, do you have a viewpoint? Very short, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, the only thing I just want to um, add to what the administrator just said is, uh, you know, uh, it is very possible. But when you're talking about Zoom, you talk about the cost implication. And, um, you know, most of the parents, they are on lockdown. Many of them, too, are experiencing a lot of um, um, the inflow of the money is not like before, before the lockdown. So we as a, a teacher, or let me say we as teachers, we, we have to look for the way to, to advise the administrators to go through um, a channel that will minimize 
the cost. At the same time, it will not make us to lose the, the efficiency of the learning activities. You understand me? And then uh, we go through um, WhatsApp. And by the time we, we, we went through WhatsApp, with WhatsApp, you can, as a teacher, you can even compress your videos. So it will minimize the cost of the teacher, of, of, the, of the parents at the other side, so they can receive that for their children too. And then with that, it has been wonderful, honestly. And then with my own experience too, at least apart from even the school, I had another group that we usually have a meeting. I had, we had like 272 students in the arm of the class that I'm teaching in the, the school that I'm working with. And uh, pertaining to that, in the group that I created on my own for the students outside the school to be able to enhance the teaching effectiveness, honestly, we are having over 90% of the students online that we usually have a meeting and we have interactive sessions together. Voice notes, screenshotting, and sent back to me, and it has been wonderful. So if you can do that in the, the secondary school, how much more the children that they love to play eat, play, sleep. That is what is there. And by that you put these videos together, you understand me, and uh, they, it's more interesting, more colorful. You know, when they see something colorful, it catches their attention. And with that, I think we are good to go. It has come to say, now Nigeria may not prepare for it, but gradually, we may think that we have not prepared for it. But honestly, everything is running towards that side now. And then, uh, well, most of the administrators are even preparing themselves for the post-COVID. That in case if the school resumes and there was a surge and we have to go back to lockdown, are we going to now be looking at the children at home or be folding our hands, which we don't pray for? But we shouldn't shy away from facing the reality of it. And with this, many schools have been preparing themselves to settle their minds for this way of teaching. It has come to stay. Let us take it like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. You really answered like two, three questions at the same time because Harvest School was just asking, are we really ready for virtual learning? And I think uh, Mrs. Amoho has actually answered that, saying that uh, we are ready and um, that we have a whole lot of limitations to explore because it's a whole new idea. That's true. There is a whole lot of limitations. But then I think if we don't start, then we never will start. It's, I mean, I feel that it's even this period, this period has been a good um, test. It's just that I'm not saying the pandemic is good, but I'm saying that it's now forcing the hands of both parents, teachers, schools to put into consideration um, virtual learning. Because I feel even if schools resume, it will be critical for them to also add it. I feel um, there should be like, even when we can, if, you, if it happens that we resume and everything is normal, which I doubt, um, it will be good for the school to do a 70% interactive face-to-face uh, -face class and at least minimum of 30% of virtual learning should be added alongside, even when school finally resumes. Okay, um, another person, uh, let me take Mr. Joseph's question. He said, what can be done if parents that are supposed to join hands with the school are refusing to pay stipends for the online teaching learning? Um, this is to Mrs. Samo. Um, please share your experience on getting parents buy-in. Because how have you been managing? Because I, I, even for some schools, you tell them, for some parents, you tell them to pay 5000 And um, it's an issue. And we really understand that the, the financial situation in the country is really not balanced for everybody. So how have you been able to get parents to pay? Because I, I know you're not doing your math class for free. My math class is my math. My math class is free on Monday for everybody, any child in the world. <laughs> okay, wow. okay, that's <laughs> nice. That's you. nice. Okay. Yes. All so right. How have you been able to um, get to on the business, on the business aspect now. Yes. Mm -hmm. On on the business aspect now. Okay. Truth is, we were all hit. We were all hit by the the effect of the pandemic and, and, and pandemic, and we can't even determine the impact yet now on everybody but the truth is the truth is we want to keep moving on as a school as a business and parents also want to keep um learning 
What that means is that we have something people need, mm. but the the dividing factor is the is the payments. How much do we pay? Mm. Why should we even pay at all? Why should we pay? And uh, why you is online? You are not doing most of your work. You don't even need to be paid for it. Now communication is key, and education is also key. We need to you need to communicate the the people that are your parents. You need to communicate with your customers. You need to um, if you are going to talk about payment, you need to be human. Like I said, you need to also take into consideration this their social economic status. Now, your model for this time should not be a cut and paste model. The fact that school A is doing this does not mean that is what you will do because the demography of parents you have, I mean, the characteristics of your parents are quite, might be very, very different. It might not be far from each other, but it might be different. Getting money at this time from parents for online school has been a very tasking um, feat. However, one of the things that held us up I won't say all. Uh, I don't say all is all is well. Hundred percent. One of the things that held us up is because we are in constant communication with the people we serve. During the COVID era, we've held the PTA. We've talked about it even before asking for anything. Okay. We've, we've held the PTA. We've talked okay. about it, and we said, "Oh, look, look at it. This is the picture we painted. Mm. These are teachers working." If we are not going to send our COVID relief to them, we shouldn't leave them to go out of to go out of their jobs. When you leave them to go out of their jobs, they go into businesses. When it's time to say, oh, it's time come to, to come school. back to school to start doing blended learning or doing uh, four hours in school and six hours on online, mm. you cannot have them again. Okay. No school, no parents want that for his or her own school. Okay. And there's one thing I usually say that drives my argument. It is parents that pay teachers' salary. It is parents that pay. So if teachers will stay, parents have a lot, a lot, a lot to do. You should be able to, as a school leader, to paint your own pictures to them. You should be able to communicate. You should be able to speak the language they understand. Okay. I don't speak English to all my parents. <laughs> okay. I don't speak English to all my parents. And there are some parents I don't speak local language to. We, because that is what she wants. They will even tell you, don't speak Yoruba to me. The parents met me last week and asked me, that, have I sent a uh, next temp bill to her, to her husband? And somebody beside me was laughing that, oh, when is the time starting? What is she That's talking about? Exactly. I say, I understand what she means. She's somebody who cannot face it, um, having, a, having a child, having any complaints. So she feels, why not? And at the same time, there are some of our parents, who, some of parents who who have issues with their businesses now. Mm -hmm. We don't go to such people and say, oh, this is the gun. You have to pay or you throw your kids out of school. Parents, I, I, I still do not want to resonate with throwing kids out of school at this time because it's a thing of relationship and whatever we do at this time will it have okay. a longer um, implication, implication emotionally too. both to the parents and to the child. So okay. we have to apply wisdom, if I am a, I'm permitted to use that word. Mm -hmm. You have to apply wisdom. You have to know the people you are working with and give them the best product per time. Yeah. Thank, okay. you. thank you very much. So I'll thank you for that um, approach as an administrator to um, um, dealing with handling parents in terms of getting them to pay. Because the reality is, it's only when the parents pay, that's when the teachers too will be paid something. And then um, there are a few questions here. I want us to go over it as quickly as possible. Um, someone from Ola Inca, he said, with the recently held NAPS, NAPS LG seminar, school owners across the state, for school owners across the state, will e-learning be an option since schools are to res resume back into normal classroom? So um, what's your view on that? Does anybody know anything about that? Can you just answer quickly? Is online Myself. learning part of part of the um, recently held seminar. Is that part of the plan of the government uh, to put online learning, e-learning as part of the option for resumption? It's a global thing. Yeah, but we you know, the, the that. government, there was, I think there was, a, there was a seminar. I don't know if you attended the seminar by the local government, okay, the NAPS. 
Oh, I, I'm not sure I followed through. I'm okay. not sure I followed through. Uh, However, Mr. what Asaide. I want to say is... Okay. okay. I don't know if it was around. What I want to say is... Okay, ma. Go ahead, ma. It, it, there's a document that has been released by United Nations, UNICEF, okay. and UNESCO on the reopening of schools. If you're a school owner or even a teacher, I would advise mm -hmm. you go and take a... It's just four pages. It's a summary. The mm -hmm. summary is four pages. Take a look at it. You have a picture of what is really happening and what you say will, it will align with the global best practice. practice okay. The schools will be open, but learning must be blended. There mm. must be social distancing. We don't want to lose our children. And that's, it's certainly going to happen. It's okay. certainly going to happen. We might not get it right. Mm -hmm. If we say we, we want to, to get start. it right, we are not saying the truth. Mm. We might not get it right. If you look at, um, if you follow some Teach for Nigeria fellows, you see that some of the options they adopted is that Teachers even take worksheets to their children in the rural areas. Mm. Those are the things UNICEF recommends so that we have less children that will be thrown out of school. We already have over 10 million out of school. We don't need to have more. So there will be innovations. There will be ideas from the top, bottom. So whatever we can do at our own place, we can, we can expand on it. I don't know if Mr. Lysende has uh, went, followed the NAPS. Okay, I, 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 okay. Let me let me just quickly get this question. This is um, a very and uh, it's I want to ask it in two directions. Um, one, how do illiterate? This is from Falilat. He said, how do, how would an illiterate parent assist the child with virtual learning? I would like Mrs. Uh, uh, Medina to help with that. Then, secondly, um, when it comes to high-end devices, what about those that do not have equal fingers? This is from Folake. Um, that their parents cannot have afford Android devices. How do they help their children? Is there another model to help with that? Uh, Mrs. Medina, I don't know if you have something to say in that direction. Yes, I think I'll start with the second question. Okay. On the Android thing, fine, we know our parents don't have access to Android phones. And I'm sorry to use you, but basically for the middle, middle income earners, mm -hmm. and basically maybe children that goes to public schools, I'm sorry to use the word, but I think the government who came up with some ideas as far as not making the children entirely not in tune with learning. I think there's a program for your state government, they, there's a program ongoing on the radio stations. It's called School on Hair. So and, uh, in recent times, most of these phones, we not even the hydrant ones, all these small, small phones, they can all access radio, even if there is no electricity supply, mm. they can access it on their phones. So the thing is for the parents to actually key don't tell the child to go walking. At the time when the child is supposed to be available for the radio on her, let him or her be available. There's also something the state government did. That was, my children had been joining that even before the schools introduced the online thing. It's called Ogundiji classes. It's on TV. So those ones too, though that is um, dependent on electricity supply. But if you are fortunate to have that as at that time, there's no reason for a child not to be available to have the classes. Of course, it runs for the GSS and the senior secondary. Mm -hmm. So if the government is coming up with those ideas, the school on here, the DG classes, I want to believe, I'm sorry, a parent that is concerned about the well-being and ed educational advancement of the child should key in, particularly the radio, the school on here. Of course, using all these uh, small, small phones, they can as well assess it. So okay. with that, I don't think it should really be an issue to the parents. Then as far a parent that is not literate, when, like I said, and I want to resonate with Mr. and the, Mr. Lassen, nothing is too much for our children. We always say they are future. It requires sacrifice. I know there can be a household that you don't have a literate person. If it's like uh, Mr. Lassen said, having a relative on ground to assist. Mm. Okay, please kindly go through this class with my child. Because mm -hmm. in actual fact, the parent that is literate might not really be able to mm -hmm. assist the child for virtual learning. So I think just employing the services of maybe like um, an family elder member. brother, an uncle, a family member, so please assist the children with doing that. Like I said, I might say, okay, maybe because I can afford it financially. I'm not always with my children too, but I still have a home to talk. 
the supervisors and monitors them during their classes. Okay. So I don't know if I've answered the question. I think that answers a little bit of it. Mr. Lassen, I don't know if you have um, a view to it. Just quickly, in about a minute, before we go to the next question. The, the only thing I, I am concerned about, honestly, is uh, uh, these are the set of uh, students who are in a remote area. Mm. That they don't even have access to electricity, not to even talk about all this kind of development. But now that the school is um, has uh, been choked with government policies, and uh, the administrators of the schools they don't even know their hands are tied now. The the only thing I would just want. Um, most of uh, these parents to ensure is to get information. Information is power. Look for the way to access. Like my my son's school, uh, they, they they were doing WhatsApp. You know, uh, nursery one, nursery two. They are still doing WhatsApp. But at a time when they are about to exhaust the teaching <laughs> a methodology plan. We have mm. to tell the parents, you can come to school and buy this book. Their test books are ready. You know, you know, you know, they, they know that if they exhaust their own uh, prepared methodology or the curriculum, the, what can keep them going is what they can have access to, which is the, the textbooks. And who are the people who can unravel all these challenging questions in the textbook, even mm, though somebody is, that's uh, close to the family? Somebody who is, and then you know, the reason why I did not talk much over the 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 lesson teachers is just the challenging issues about this um, um, raping, raping, raping existence in the society over the the female uh, children and everything. But people who are within that we can supervise, that we can monitor. I think mm -hmm. these are the people that we can use to unravel most of these uh, pro These questions. Uh, alleged questions that okay. uh, we have present. All right. Thank you very much. I think we um, this you. this this uh, discussion has really opened up a lot of uh, views and angles and approach that can be used. Um, we've talked about the radio, um, the school on here that the government has been doing on radio, the TV approach that um, the government has also helped with. We know it's not the it's not it's not fully fully um, enough, but then it's it's better than nothing at this stage. You understand? And also the the various schools and organizations that are now trying different online learning platform for schools. I think um, uh, we just need to key in as parents as uh, organizations in order to be able to just learn no matter what. Because um, outside the country, I know there are a lot of they are, it's as if school is not on break at all. They, are, they keep moving. They kept moving despite the, the challenges of this period. And we don't want our children to, to lose out. And also, we don't want um, learning to stop. So, um, there, we, we, we have another question here. And I think this, would, this will be the last question we'll take before we round up um, for the day. Um, it has to do, somebody sent a comment here. Virtual learning system is a welcome development. How will network problem affects its effectiveness. I would like Mr. Okoje to answer the, the next few questions. This one, and then the next one I'll be reading, which is how will network affect it, its effectiveness? Then how many public school children would have access to it? Um, will it not further widen the educational gap between the elite and in, in, indigent ones when put into use? The policy of education for all is a panacea for developmental challenges facing this country. And virtual learning must not frustrate it. Virtual learning must be carried in a way that will not further widen the gap between the haves and the have not. The athletic network. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much for that comment. Then the next one, which I want Mr. Okoje to add in answering the question as quickly as possible. He said, the person said um, from Mr. Samuel Luashegu to Mr. George, due to the high cost implication of these online platforms, what are the other models that can be employed to this virtual learning to reduce um, cost to the lowest price? So give a suggestion as to um, a, a possible online platform that can be added 
that something that is not too expensive because I also know that educational learning systems can be expensive in, in, in when you want to put up a system like that through the normal means, developing a, a, a customized system for the school. So what's your, what's your advice quickly, sir? Okay, uh, thank you uh, for your time. <coughs> uh, going to, uh, with the first question, um, network issue, which is, um, it's a very, very, um, as is a, is a major problem that we are facing in this country. And we cannot shy away from it. It's something that we, we've learned to live with and we continue to live, live with it. We have to make adjustments to meet as in to, to, for what is available for us. For example, what I advise people to do when they ask for the network, which network is stable, which network is this, I do, I'm not a net, mobile network operator and I don't advertise any of them. What I always tell them is checking, um, you, you have to ask people around which network are you using, what is the performance, which network are you using, what is the performance. Going through that, taking random samples to know the performance of the network around your, your um, residence will determine the network to go with. For example, MTN might be, might, be, might, be, might be working very well in my area while it's not working in the next building. So that's point number one. Then point number two, the device is another factor too. The devices that uh, will be used for these uh, online classes determines um, the, the status or, or the um, strength of the network. For example, a device that is limited to, to edge. Okay, let me just use HSPDA before we talk about uh, maybe 3G. Okay, let me limit it to 3G. Currently, we have 4G, we have 4G LTE. People that are on 4G LTE, they can't even complain about network uh, strength because we have the network strength and we have this stability also. The network might have a full bar and the, the, the latency might be poor. It might not be able to even transfer data. So this, what we need to confirm first is how, how, how strong is the network, which is the strength? That's the bar, the number of bars you see on your, on your phone. Then okay. the next one is the next one is okay. If the, the network uh, strength is good, then what about the latency? How what is the rate of data transfer? Is it is it good? Mm -hmm. At times there might be rain. You are you are close to the to the to the network uh, mast. You have a strong um, service or network status, but the data transmission is whack. There's nothing True. you can do to it. True. True. So you can say you want to switch away from that and switch to another one, which might be good as as at now and might be bad after a few minutes. So left to, uh, left to me, I always advise uh, people to, to check the network that is good in their environment and switch to it. Then number two, and I yes, always- uh, The costs, which one, which was your advice on the platform that will be cost effective that schools, low income schools or parents that are, if you know your parents are at the low income level that they can easily employ because you don't want them to lose out to Exactly. Um, here uh, we have we have three people we are talking about here. Okay. Number one, we have we have the school, the school administrator. Okay. Secondly, we have the parents, and thirdly, we have the uh, the instructors yes. or the teachers. Yes. So, if we are talking about okay, this looking looking at it from the school's angle, mm -hmm. schools know how they can implement something and get their money from parents. A school might come up today and say, okay, we want to be using social social platform. Parents, we are adding social social amount. The next question will be, are pay, can parents pay? We need to be factual. This pandemic affects everybody. Both parents, both school administrators, both the um, instructors or teachers. So left to me, and if you are talking about that, the choice of the school will determine what the instructors or the teachers have to to learn how to use or to adopt uh, to adapt to them themselves with to go okay. with. For okay. for example, if the if the school says okay, we are going for uh, WhatsApp, <laughs> then you can't tell me the, the, the teachers have not been using WhatsApp to communicate with their with their with their friends and family. Okay. So they will, they will, they will, they will accept that easily. And okay. we at least seventy percent of parents would want to key into it. 
picking from the first question, which is public school and okay. the poor, should, should I use the, the word? Low income. Low income. Low income. income. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Low income earners. So I don't want to use kind of uh, poor word. So okay. low income earners and uh, public school uh, people. I believe. Is there, a model? Is there something they can use? A platform? Any day, any time. When it comes to ease of use, when it comes to uh, availability, when it comes to because it doesn't it doesn't require registration, just download the app, open it, two steps you are done, which is WhatsApp. Okay. Any day, any time. I will implore school administrators to start with WhatsApp until until the economy is stable, mm. because if they are going by, okay, let's go to Telegram. A lot of people don't understand how to use okay. Telegram. Okay. A lot of people don't understand it. If the teachers are able to use Telegram, if the school has just uh, uh, insist on using Telegram, what about the parents? If the parents are not available, who are the people, who are the family members, or who are the helpers in the, in the, in the parent side that will help the children or the pupils to, 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 to operate the Telegram groups? Okay. okay. But okay. even, even um, house, housemates, house help, Mind you, if they have smartphone, they use WhatsApp. Okay. So if they are the ones that are available, they will still be able to use to WhatsApp. Use WhatsApp to, at least, at the perspective least, of the least. person. That's, exactly. I think that's that's a good approach. So that there is no there is no excuse for not doing any, not learning, because um, exactly. there is you can't use the platform. Um, quickly before we wrap up, um, we would give um, the mic over to our, our CEO, uh, Mr. Galega Adeda, for to. Just give his perspective. Over to you, sir. Mm. Uh, I think uh, there's no doubt uh, today to our dear participants, you have made a great choice in participating in today's uh, session. And uh, one of the panelists said something which is very important. And we need to hold this. We offer an essential service. It's just kind of unfortunate that they are saying essential services. Nobody will ever say something about education. Because where you miss education, you miss development. And uh, one thing to everyone of us, uh, in challenges like this, is when our sense of creativity develops. It's better for us to take advantage of this, uh, to key into what they've been saying so far. Um, I trust you have derived a great value for this program, and this is time for you to act. I said something earlier on, the issue must be taken. If care is not taking uh, procrastination, we still show for you. Uh, I'm impressed by the Paris performance. We need made the right decision to engage you people in uh, today's program. Well, we don't have much to give you. We pray we continue to increase in our wisdom and. Uh, we pray as well uh, to Almighty God to reward you accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Now that, that was it. Um, it's been a nice time having everybody, um, both our panelists, our attendees. Thank you very much. Like uh, the MD said, the educationists, our teachers, our parents, our administrators, they are the essential workers. That should actually be appreciated. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. And to everybody that has attended the webinar, we really appreciate you. Uh, we say a very big thank you to you. If there is any question, if there is anything you want to get across to us, you could send an email to webinar at harassmentpublications.com or info at harassmentpublications.com. You could also chat with us on the number you've um, had, um, 0701. 444-3069. On behalf of the webinar team, the staff and management of Rasmus Publication, we sincerely appreciate 
the time and contributory efforts you have put in place in making this edition a reality. We look forward to getting your feedback. Thank you very much. As usual, we'll be sending our materials, um, materials of the presentation, the link for the video. We'll be sending it to your email addresses. Um, thank you very much for joining us today again, and we hope to see you next time. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much.